Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If this is your first time here, please go down and click subscribe. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you need IT consulting, you can go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about tonight is this Netgear switch. And we've looked at the Synology UC3200. We looked at the uh, DS1621XS Plus last week. And to make all of these things run as smoothly as possible, we need a 10 gig network. Or at least maybe that's what I'm just telling myself is that we need a 10 gig network. But anyway, I wanna thank Netgear for sending this over. This is no contract. I know there's been some kerfluffle uh, lately about uh, Netgear and review contracts and things like that. So I am not on the hook uh, for any type. I'm not receiving any monetary, anything besides I get to keep this switch. And this is a higher end Netgear switch. This is not like your ProSafe line. This is um, something that I would consider, I mean, it's obviously not as um, maybe popular right now as like a Cisco or a Juniper, but this definitely is a higher end switch than most of anything we've done videos on so far. Now, when we get to Extreme and Juniper and some of that stuff later in the year, then you're going to see that. But for now, this Netgear is probably going to be the most adva advanced switch that we've used on the channel so far. Once again, thanks to Netgear for sending this out. Um, this is the Netgear M4300 8X8F. So this switch has 16 ports. Eight of those are 10 gig copper ports. So it'll do 100 meg, one gig, 10 gig. And then we've got uh, eight SFP plus ports for a total of 16 ports. So a little bit more about the 4300. And we're gonna set this up real quick and get this ready for the next video because we're gonna use this in conjunction with our UC3200 and also with our new Synology uh, DS1621XS. And then I've also, uh, I'm gonna bring out my old Unify application server, the, uh, I can't remember what it was, but it's got two 10 gig ports. I couldn't, I couldn't remember the, the model number because it's been uh, end of life, but it does have two 10 gig ports. So we're gonna use that First as a Windows server, then we're going to throw a hypervisor on there and we're going to run some VMs. I'm going to run some VMs, hopefully uh, for several months on that UC3200. We'll see how long uh, Synology allows me to hang on to that. And if we have to move those, um, if we have to move those VMs, then uh, we'll move those over to the DS1621XS. But we need a solid 10 gig, 10 gig network. So I've got that 10 gig switch from a uh, QNAP that we will run. We've got some other 10 gig capable switches as far as uplink goes that'll probably come into the mix, but this switch is going to be our core switch for 10 gig. So a little bit about this before we get um, over to the uh, computer and set it up. One thing you may not know about this series, first of all, uh, MSRP on this switch is between $1,700 and $2,000. Now, you're asking yourself, why would I pay that kind of money for a Netgear switch? Like I said, this is not your standard ProSafe switch. It's got a, a removable modular uh, power adapter. Now, this is a half switch, which means they actually sell you um, in the package. Let me show, show you what you get real quick. So you get the switch, you get a rack here, because you can rack mount this by itself. Uh, you get a config cable, and then you get these uh, funny looking uh, brackets here, but what you can actually do is you can mount two of these side by side in a one U slot in your rack, and that gives you top of the rack redundancy in a one U slot. Then of course you get power cables and they send you know power cables for other countries. We're not gonna be using these. We will be using the US plug. And then we get a package of propaganda. We get a a, re, a, D, a, C, blah, 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 a CD that has uh, you know quick start guide, documentation, it's got console driver, MIB files, and online registration. Now, along with this switch from Netgear, you are gonna get a lifetime, limited lifetime warranty on this. You're gonna get next business day replacement, 
And that's just on the hardware, right? And you get lifetime tech support, whatever that's worth. You're going to have to judge that for yourself. Now, uh, you certainly, with other brands that we deal with, you do not get that lifetime warranty. And on a $1,700 switch, minimum, I've seen them range from $1,700 to $2,300 and all over the place. Lifetime warranty, next business day replacement, that is huge for this switch. So real quick, I'll show you the switch. We'll show you the front. We've got over here, we've got a uh, management port, console port. And then over here, we've got our um, SFP ports. And then we've got our copper ports. You can also stack this switch with other switches. So there is an LED indicator of uh, which number switch this is in the stack. Now, uh, this switch does full layer two switching, which we would expect, and it does layer three routing. So it'll do RIP, OSPF, you can do VRRP with it, policy-based routing, and there is no licensing cost for that. So you can also use their uh, single pane of glass NMS300 management platform. And what that'll do is it will actually do mass configuration and um, uh, firmware updates and the whole bit of all these switches. So we'll probably check that out at some point too. We can do distributed lags across the stack, right? So what does that mean? Uh, distributed lag means I can have, I can take a, a port from two different switches. I can take a, a port from each switch and I can lag them together across the stack. So if I've got multiple switches in my stack, I can lag individual ports from each, each of those switches. So then I really have a lot of redundancy built into that lag. I'm super excited to get started on this. So let's, uh, let's get over to the computer. We'll get this plugged in. For now, it's gonna set on the table on top of the UC3200. And that is um, where we are going to, to have it when we plug our servers and everything else in. So at some point, I'll show you that stack. Okay, so by default, the switch, if you've got a DHCP server on your network, you can plug into any of the ports, including the out-of-band management, and the switch will get a DHCP address. So I did that, and you can see we got 172.16.1.252, and our default username is admin with no password. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna make me change the default password. So we're gonna put our lab password in here. And now it's gonna make us log in. So let's take a look at this uh, interface here. So system information, see there's an app running on it, the discovery uh, agent. We tried to open some sort of a pop-up, we'll have to check that out. System name, we're gonna call this uh, Netgear Lab 4300 WH Lab. Really how? Management VLAN is going to be uh, VLAN 1. <coughs> Down here, you can see our fan uh, status is OK. You can see the temperature in centigrade here. So I'm going to have to figure out. I'm either going to have to figure out how to read centigrade or I'm going to have to um, figure out how to change that to Fahrenheit. Go ahead and apply that so our, because this information will show up in SNMP. I've got a special uh, something or other for you on that. I'm not going to spoil that for now. And we'll make sure we save that configuration. Here's our CPU status. And we've only got one CPU. This is the first time this switch has been booted. Switch statistics. If we've got anything plugged into USB, tells us everything going on there. Here's our slot info. And you can see we can probably stack all of these switches together if I had to guess. If anybody knows if that's not the case, definitely let us know. All right, so it's going, it's using uh, SNN, SNTP to get its time. What's it using for the server? So by default, it is reaching out to um, timed hyphen something dot netgear dot com. Looks like 
I don't know if there's something wrong with time-a.netgear.com or not, but it looks like this switch got us the result that we need or close to it. Time zone must be must be off. And here we can set our daylight savings time, which I'm hoping that we get rid of that here um, in Illinois pretty soon. So um, I'm going to have to figure out where to change that time zone. Got DNS configuration here, and you can see it's, uh, I don't know if it grabbed these um, from DHCP. It very well could have. SDM te templates here, green Ethernet configuration. Yeah, we you know we like to be green, but I usually disable some of that because it causes issues with some devices. We've got Bonjour. Let's see. I mean, this switch can do a lot. So here's the actual device view. So you get a nice um, graphical representation of the switch. You can see that I'm plugged into. Um, port 9. Here's our console port. You can see we're switch number one in the stack. Come over here. So this does have a DHCP server. It's got a DHCP relay, UDP relay. Here's our stacking options. So this is where we can, if we had multiple switches, we can do the stack here. Stack configuration. And this switch can do a lot. Did you ever think that you would see a Netgear switch that had all of this stuff? So here's our VLAN configurations. So we can get in here and let's see. Take a look at our VLAN status. We've only got one VLAN for now. But we're going to have multiple VLANs because we're going to have an iSCSI VLAN and then... Um, we're going to have, well, we'll put voice on here and see what happens. Here's IP subnet based VLANs, protocol based VLANs, MAC based VLANs. Here's your uh, port VLAN ID configuration, voice VLAN configuration, D VLAN configuration. Here's our auto VoIP settings. So this switch also has iSCSI prioritization, which is awesome. Here's our spanning tree, multicast, MBR. Now, what I actually really need to do with this switch um, is I need to actually put it in a different network. Right now I got it plugged in and it's in this 172.16.1 and I actually need to move it over to a 192.168.66. So we will get there um, in a minute. Here's that routing. Here's our default route. Here's IP routing or our IP configuration. IP version 6, VLAN. So we've got VLAN static routing. So here is your RIP configuration, OSPF. OSPF version 3, router discovery. VRRP. Here's our quality of service options, our security, our access configuration. So right now, um, we're on HTTP, so we should enable HTTPS. Oh, and you can see it supports TLS 1.2, which is perfect. I wonder if it's going to make us configure a certificate. Yep. All right, so we need to go here and generate our certificate. We can see here it says the certificate generation is in progress. So we'll go back, certificate present, yes. We'll go back to HTTPS and enable that.
And all right, let's see. SSH is disabled. We'll go ahead and enable SSH. And for now, we're gonna leave the default on there. Okay, so that's cool. What we've gotta do is we've gotta generate our um, RSA and our DSA keys. So we will apply that. Now this could, this could take a minute. Keys present both. So now we'll go back over here. We'll enable SSH. Perfect, Telnet should be disabled. Whoa! We don't want outbound Telnet and we don't want Telnet at all. That's, that's not good. Come on, Netgear. Console port, we're gonna leave all this stuff the same for now. Denial of service, here's access controls. So there's a lot we can do with this switch, holy cow. Here's a 802.1X. Here's our traffic control. ACLs. Oh, this is nice. They've got this little like wizard thing that helps you build the ACL. Oh, look at this. This is nice. That's awesome. For those of you who have ever built ACLs by hand, you know that that little wizard could come right in hand. Um, let's see to, uh, let's see if we do upgrade. So it looks like we have to have a path to be able to upgrade the software there. which is okay. We will uh, see if we can get the new firmware for that. So let's go down here under system and management. And under this, it's gonna give us, you know, how do we want the management interface to be um, configured? So there's a management interface configuration here and there's a service port configuration here. And you can see that this service uh, port is down. So that would be our um, out of band uh, management, I do believe, is what that is. But what we're going to do is we're going to use VLAN 1. You can see it says link up. There's DHCP. We're going to come down here. And what we're going to do is let's see. Since it's VLAN 1, we've got to come back over here and use this configuration. So we're going to put a manual IP on here, and we're going to use 192.168.66. We're going to use .3. And I'm gonna apply that, and then I'm gonna have to move a cable real quick. We are now on the 192.168.66. network. Let's open this and see what this thing wants. We're delighted to have you. Okay, so their pop-up is about registration. So we got an IP on our um, on our system. What we're gonna do when we do our iSCSI VLAN? is we are not gonna allow that VLAN to leave this switch uh, because this is gonna be the switch that we're gonna run on. And, and our iSCSI does not need to be routed out to the internet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're not using a VLAN that we're using on the rest of the networks. All right, we are gonna use VLAN 10. And that is gonna be our uh, iSCSI VLAN. And now we have VLAN 10. So that is gonna be our iSCSI VLAN. And so when we come back to the, uh, the setup for the UC3200 and for the DS1621XS, we'll already have our VLAN. We know what we're gonna do with it. So um, 
real quick a few more features. I mean, this thing is just so feature packed that I'm just I'm overwhelmed and just trying to show you a little bit of everything. I mean, we're gonna have so much fun with this switch; it's not even funny. So here is the QoS, um, the COS, the diff serve. I think I showed you the uh, security here already. Here's our monitoring, ports, logs, mirroring. Then we've got S flow. And then here's your S flow receiver configuration, interface configuration. So I think this is going to wrap it up uh, for the moment. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we've got to put our storage in iSCSI and we've got to get um, our server set up. So come back for those videos. All right, that's it for this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If uh, you want to support the channel by using any of our affiliate links, those are below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks to the channel. I want to thank everybody who uses those. Like I said, don't feel obligated but it does help. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being, for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.